Hi everyone and welcome to the quick showcase and tutorial for the action RPG fast travel system. I've been playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey lately and I'm really enjoying myself. So I decided that I wanted to recreate the fast travel system for fun in Unreal Engine. So what you see here is I have a map with a few uh, different locations like this little supposedly ancient temple here. And each location will have this little blueprint called BP Travel Point. Um, and this blueprint will basically uh, have the player, when it approaches, be able to save the location. So let's just do a really quick demo here. I'm going to click play. I'm going to maximize my screen. And I'm just going to travel there. So, I, so you can see that nothing is there. And as soon as I start, as I start getting close to the, uh, to the fast travel point, at some point, I'm going to hit the outer trigger. And you can see that now we have a little widget here that says synchronize. And if I keep going here and I go to the actual point, which is going to be right here, and I press E, you see that we have a nice little animation which kind of rotates around the player and reveals the map. Uh, again, very much like the game. Uh, and then once it does its little um, rotation, the location is now saved and you get control of your character again. So if I go down here and I press M for the menu, now you see that we have a drop down list with all of the saved locations. And right now we only have one, which is the market. So if you click on market, you see that we're now teleported here. Very, very simple. And I'm going to show you in a second how to create a brand new save point so you can see how simple it is. You can scatter this all around the map. Let's do one more example here. Let's go to this supposed uh, temple here. And again, we're getting close. We hit that outer trigger. Now we hit, now we can see the, uh, the widget here. And I'm just going to pretend that I'm climbing. Uh, and funny enough, somebody on YouTube uh, mentioned when I was uh, showing this on the previous video that I was missing the bird Icarus, if you've ever played the game. So just for fun, last night I decided to add that option. So that's very, very specific. You can see that he appears here now, so that's a little uh, option. Uh, Icarus seems to be a little stiff, uh, but I'm sure you can figure out how to change the mesh and, and add animations. But you can see that it's basically the same thing, right? Uh, I'll show you all the options there, but you can see that now the location is saved. And now if I come down here and I press M, now we have two different locations. And notice that we have specific names, right? So I can go to the market and I'm right here, press M again, and I can go to the temple. And that is pretty much it, right? And we have all the different uh, locations there. They are saved to disk, which is really, really cool. That means that if you're loading a different level, if you shut down the game and load it again, that is going to stay saved. Um, talking about Icarus, and again, this is a bonus for you guys, uh, if you've ever played the game. In the game, you can you actually get to control your, your bird, right? You get to control him to kind of scout the area um, and look for targets. So I added this as a bonus. If you press B, you can see it on the menu, B for bird. You can see that we're now controlling Icarus and you can just fly around. And if you wanted to scout an area, you can press uh, Q to focus. And you can see that we slow down time, we zoom in, and now we actually can control the camera here. And then when we release, Icarus goes back to normal. You can also have a little boost by pressing the space bar. Uh, so this is just most for fun. You can see here that we are still moving. So we're slowing down time and you have an option to change that. And then you can go ahead and scout your little camp in the distance. And when you're ready, you press E and then you're going back to the player. So that was just for fun. Um, hopefully if, uh, if you ever wanted to implement a little controllable bird, you have that option there uh, and you can use that as a starting point. So notice that I said that this is a save game. So if you go to blueprints here, you see that we have a BP save game um, underscore travel. This is where the actual data is being saved. So if I hit play here and I press M for my map, notice that we still have the different locations, right? So this is why it's useful. Um, if I wanted to go to another location here, I'm just gonna start here. Why not just to get one more? You'll notice that we have the synchronize and as soon as I get there, I press E. And again, you'll have the little animation and you're gonna see that we're gonna save it 
and we're going to go ahead and add it to the list. And that is after I turned off the game, right? I, I stopped the, the, the editor and I came back. So this is in that way uh, really useful because you get to, uh, there you go, you get to save your locations. All right, so let's go ahead and create a brand new spot right here. Uh, and if you go down to the blueprints folder, it's going to be very simple. You're going to have a blueprint called BP Travel Point. I'm just going to drag it here. And you can see that we have a couple of things. We have the inner trigger here. And that is called the player trigger. This is the, the trigger that will allow the player to actually press E or whatever key you assign to save the location. And then the widget trigger, which is the much bigger one here, is the trigger that will basically show that little message that says, hey, synchronize. So this is based on proximity. So if you wanted to make this bigger or smaller, just change the value. And the same here thing for the uh, trigger here. You also have the options to make this uh, trigger visible or hidden. So if I disable this, the hidden, and I press play, notice that now I can see the trigger at gameplay, and that may be useful for uh, debugging purposes. Right? So notice that as soon as I enter the big trigger, I can see the synchronized message there. There's also a couple more options like the camera FOV. When um, you can see the FOV here, if you click here, you can see that this is a very wide FOV. If I make this smaller, notice that we're basically zooming in because the field of view of the camera is going down, right? So by default, I think 115, we want a really wide field of view so you can really see the landscape, but you can change that there. Camera blend time is the amount of time that it takes for the camera to transition from the player to the point camera. You can change that. And the camera rotation time, um, the longer you, the bigger you make this number, the slower it'll go rotate. So right now it's at 10. If you if you feel like the rotation is too slow, then make this smaller. Then make this number smaller. If you want it to last even longer, then make it longer. Then there's a return control delay. As soon as the rotation is done, it'll wait one second here, and then it'll return control to the player. And finally, and most importantly, you want to have a unique location name. I'm saving this as a map, so each location needs to have a unique name. So we just call it test location, which of course is the uh, most uh, creative name that I could think of. And then if we do that and we click on play, we're going to go and now go there, see that we have the synchronize and notice that we have to be inside the trigger here to press E. And now the camera is going to rotate. And this is again the 10 seconds that we uh, said that we wanted to, then one second, then it says location saved. And now if I press M, notice that we have test location. It really is that easy. That's it. Test location and we're back at our little dune. Notice now that if we already have a location saved, the trigger will not work. So if I approach this location here, notice that even though we're inside the trigger, we're not seeing the synchronized message. And if I come here and press E, oops, nothing happens because this is checking whether the location's already saved or not. And that is pretty much it, guys. It is that simple to add your own location. Um, I hope this is useful for you guys. I do want to show a few things because I always get these questions. Um, if you wanted to migrate this project to your own custom project, which I'm sure most of you would want to, the way Unreal works is you want to open this in Unreal 4.22, that's the original um, version, or later, so 4.22 or later, and when you open the project, click on the root folder AC underscore fast travel, right click, click on migrate, go ahead, save, and then it'll give you this little window that is going to tell you everything that it needs to migrate. Click on OK. And then it'll click, it'll show you this window. You have to choose your destination. So say that I wanted to migrate this to, I don't know, Action RPG. Whatever your project, you have to navigate to your project and click on the content folder. This is very important. It has to be the content folder. And then click on Select Folder and it'll actually copy it. And when you go to your project, you should have a new folder called AC underscore fast travel and everything should work as expected. Okay. 
Another interesting thing to note is that if you wanted to use your own character, right now I'm using the default third person character, go ahead and open the blueprint and I color coded the code that you need to copy to your custom character in blue. Again, anticipating some of the questions. So on your custom character, you'll have to create the HUD on begin play, everything in blue, and then you have to use these functions. And by the way, this is M and E, you can put whatever you want. Just make sure that you look at everything that is in blue. And this is just the little menu that shows, um, you know, M and B, just, just for convenience, you don't have to use that. But open here, copy the stuff in blue, and you need to make sure that you add, oops, the player tag to your character. So click on whatever uh, name of the character, look for a tag, and you need to add an actor tag of, of um, player like this. Otherwise, Travel Point will not register that the actual player is overlapping. And if you open the Travel Point, if you're doing that, there's also two things in blue that you need to change. Right now, I'm casting directly to the third person character. But if you're using a custom character, first copy all of this code to your custom character, then come here and from player drag and cast to your custom character class. And from there, drag and set the current travel point. And the same thing here, you'll have to cast to whatever class you need and reset the current travel point there. All right. Uh, couple more things. Uh, if you go to blueprints, you see that we have the bird BP here. That is uh, the bird that you're actually controlling. We do have a few options here, like the speed of the bird, the min and max pitch, and it's going to be a negative and a positive. So if you really want to use the bird again, this is a bonus. You can easily control how agile the bird is by specifying a max and min pitch when you're going up and down, Ma uh, min and max roll, Again, this is when you're turning left and right. The focus factor, this is gonna be basically the time dilation, how slow is time. So this is 0 0.05 is 5% of the regular time dilation. You do not make this zero. You can make it very, very small, but please don't make it zero. Otherwise you'll have some issues. You have a boost amount, and then you have a camera FOV, and right now it's 100 when the bird is flying. And then when you focus, you, you uh, change the FOV to something smaller to give the, uh, the opinion or the, the, the feel that there's a little, a little zoom effect, right? So feel free to change all of these settings here. Again, you don't have to do anything. Uh, if you're not even using the bird, again, this is just a little bonus. But if you are and you want to study how I did the movement and how I'm doing certain things, uh, feel free to check out how I'm doing the controls and everything. Uh, and lastly, if you uh, wanted to change some of the messages and menus, so if you click on WBP underscore sync, this is what appears and it says E and synchronize. This is very much the language of Assassin's Creed, but if you wanted to make this generic and you had another key that, it, uh, that the player needed to uh, press, literally just open here, change the, the text here and click here and change the text here and it'll just update to whatever is relevant to your game. Same thing for the location saved. This is the message that appears when the location is saved. If you wanted to put something like synchronization completed or location completed or something, just click here and change the text here. You can also change the color and everything else. This is basically just regular UMGs that I'm using. I did want to point that out because I have a feeling that some people will ask, how about migration and how do you modify this to your project? So uh, that's it, guys. Um, there's going to be a link uh, to the download files below. If you have any questions, feel free to um, leave them in the comment section. If you want to join our Discord, I have a bunch of other free assets that I release periodically. They're all on my GitHub. So once you download this, uh, feel free to navigate and get whatever you want. If you join our Discord, we have a pretty active community. You can ask questions and maybe you guys can work on even improving this further down the line. All right. I hope you find this useful. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. Uh, and yeah, I'll talk to you in the next video.